NASA has plans on visiting Mars and Venus in the coming years, and they say the only way to do that is to incorporate nuclear propulsion. This is an old idea, but governmental institutions and private companies are now bringing these ideas to life. The US military recently invested in Lockheed Martin to develop a nuclear spacecraft. Rolls-Royce unveiled a nuclear reactor for the moon. And the US Air Force contracted a startup in Houston to develop a nuclear-powered spacecraft. Even Elon Musk is heavily promoting atomic rockets. And recently, the Senate just extended a nuclear liability limiting law. In previous videos, we've explored the billionaire-led space race, but today, we'll begin our investigation into the new atomic space race. Welcome to the Global Network. Please support us by clicking the like button and subscribing to our social media accounts to stay up to date with our content. If you want to go further, consider joining our organization by visiting our website, spaceforpeace.org. In previous videos, we've explored the billionaire-led space race, but today we'll begin our investigation into the new atomic space race. The recent Oppenheimer blockbuster, released in July of 2023, focused on the destructive power of nuclear weapons and its history. At the same time, the new atomic space race is gaining ground. For instance, in the same month of July, the US Senate passed the National Defense Authorization Act, which includes a 20-year extension of the Price-Anderson Nuclear Industries Act. This act essentially says that if any off-site lives or property were to be lost in a severe reactor accident, the nuclear industry manufacturers will not be held liable. Then there is NASA, who has had their eye on nuclear propulsion for over 60 years, going back to the NERVA program of the 1950s. Over the decades, due to the lack of technological development, many of these programs were incomplete. But in 2021, NASA published a request for industry to develop nuclear space propulsion technologies. Since then, a load of contracts have been given out. And as of last year, NASA has been working with DARPA to launch a nuclear rocket into orbit by early 2026. The project is known as DRACO, Demonstration Rocket for Agile Cislunar Operations, which will be built by Lockheed Martin with the goal of testing nuclear thermal propulsion. Their eventual aim, Mars. So why are we here today? I'm pleased to announce that the nation's next big development in space technology is a major investment in getting to Mars. NASA will partner with our longtime partner, DARPA, to develop and demonstrate advanced nuclear thermal propulsion a revolutionary technology that will allow the United States to expand the possibilities for future human spaceflight missions. Our goal is to launch and demonstrate a successful nuclear thermal engine as soon as 2027. In addition, China says they plan on producing a nuclear-powered shuttle launch by 2045. And in 2022, one of their nuclear reactors passed a comprehensive performance evaluation and has the goal of providing power and propulsion in outer space. Initiated in 2019, but won't see outer space for several more years. In 2021, Rolls-Royce teamed up with the UK Space Agency to produce a roadmap for the country to develop further space technologies, including nuclear power technologies. Currently, the UK holds 4% of the global space industry, but it wants to hold 10% by 2030. In line with this vision, Rolls-Royce recently unveiled a concept model of their space micro-reactor for a future spacecraft and for bases on the moon. In addition, the UK-based Bangor University, in the NASA-led Artemis program, has designed nuclear fuel cells to produce energy needed to sustain life on the moon. 
and they hope for an outpost to be present by 2030. Now, the U.S. Air Force awarded Lockheed Martin $33 million to work on a nuclear-powered spacecraft and its technologies, such as launching a fission reactor to generate heat, which will then be converted into electricity. Russia, on the other hand, recently set a 2030 timeline to launch its nuclear-powered space tug, Zeus, into orbit. But its mission seems to be different from others. Cleaning up space debris. This concept is expected to be completed by 2024, but sent into space by 2030. So, a lot of action is being conducted to develop the newly renovated nuclear space industry. But, why is this important? For starters, let's examine the main reason for developing nuclear-powered space tech. Mainly, it's to shorten the trip to Mars. Essentially, that's what it boils down to. Here's what Linda Gunter, an international specialist and founder of Beyond Nuclear, had to say about this reasoning. There are so many things wrong with this. The premise is that not using a nuclear reactor to power the rocket will mean it will just be too tediously slow for human passengers to endure a journey of seven months. With the reactor on board, speeding the rocket on its way, the journey to Mars could be cut down to what? A mere three and a half months. Not tedious at all. The author goes on to make several arguments as to why, at least in this current period, spending billions on this adventure to Mars is ridiculous. For one, Spending billions of dollars to send three astronauts to Mars is a ridiculous notion when we have a planet of people who could make better use of those resources. Or that rockets occasionally explode during the launch period, adding pollution to our already severely toxic planet. But the main argument by Gunter is behind this extraordinary push for nuclear power in space is, in actuality, a military program. As this new atomic space race is pushed as a friendly competition of who has the most creativity, the actual goal is complete domination of outer space. 